go. All right, John, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so, so we're, we're breaking a lot of records here. The previous Chancellor of the Exchequer was in office for uh, a record short period of time. It was only 38 days, the, the shortest period ever, uh, unless you include somebody who died in office. And the last Prime Minister, Liz Trust, was also in office for the shortest ever period of time. Again, if you exclude somebody who died in office. And now we have um, the third Prime Minister in something like uh, four months. And he is also breaking records. He's the youngest Prime Minister in modern times. He's the first ever um, uh, Prime Minister of Asian origin, a practicing Hindu. Although I should say he's also um, an extremely wealthy and privileged person. He's not typical of ordinary Asian people in this country. And within him and his wife, who's called Murti, I believe, um, they have so much money that for the first time ever in British history, the occupants of 10 Downing Street have got more money, more wealth than the occupants of Buckingham Palace. Um, so it's an extremely turbulent situation. The reason why uh, Rishi Sunak came to office was because the previous Prime Minister and her Chancellor, who was called Kwasi Kwarteng, uh, who was a, a man of African origin, um, in fact, uh, people came to call him Kami Kwasi because uh, he, he adopted um, emergency uh, budget measures that completely tanked the pound, the stock exchange, uh, British government bonds went through the floor, and the so-called markets completely wrecked uh, everything that the government was trying to do. Effectively, what they were trying to do was give massive tax giveaways to the rich uh, without any compensating increases in taxes elsewhere, and the markets couldn't abide it. So that's why she only lasted 44 days, and he only lasted 38 days. Um, and then the new chancellor who's come in and the new prime minister have tried to kind of steady the, steady the boat. Uh, they are uh, talking about um, new budget measures and new emergency measures, which are gonna be introduced in, I think it's November the 17th. And almost certainly that will be a big turn back towards austerity here. I mean, serious austerity like we had in 2010. Uh, and that's coming at a time when uh, British households, ordinary British workers are suffering the biggest cuts in living standards for 200 years. So although Rishi Sunak appears to have steadied the ship and calmed the markets at the moment, um, that's not going to last. I should also say that behind all this, there's a really very, very profound economic crisis in Britain. Economically speaking, Britain is the weakest of the major G7 capitalist countries. It's one of the, uh, per capita, it's one of the weakest economies in Europe now. They keep talking about Britain. They use this kind of 19th century term. In the 19th century, politicians used to talk about the Ottoman Empire as being the, and Turkey being the, the uh, weak man of Europe. But now Britain is now the, the weak man of Europe. And so, you know, the economic crisis is really, really a significant uh, issue. What's also significant at the moment is that we have huge numbers of workers involved in, in industrial action, more than there's been at any time since the 1970s. In fact, in, in some ways, it's, mm -hmm. it's different to the 1970s, because in the 1970s, um, I, I'm sure uh, Gary will remember, it was, it was what were called the, the heavy battalions. It was, um, it was coal miners, it was car workers, engineering workers, shipbuilding workers, uh, and a lot of those industries have gone now anyway. What's significant about the wave of strikes we have now is that it's a very, very broad um, number of workers. It's telecommunications workers, it's dockers, it's uh, barristers had a strike, believe it or not, barristers, and they won a 15% pay rise. It's teachers are balloting for strike action, nurses are balloting for strike action, right across the board. 
because inflation is 15%, sorry, food price inflation is 15%, official inflation is about 10%, and workers are not prepared to accept it. They're not prepared to accept 2 3% when prices are going up 10%, and that's why you've got this rush of strikes. Now, Sunak is going to have to deal with that as well. So I, I won't go on at length, but it's, it's a very, um, uh, you know, it, it's a very volatile situation in politics in Britain at the present time. The contradictions and the conflicts and the, the divisions are very sharp, very um, accentuated, much more than they have been for a long time. I mean, it's an exciting time to be in politics. So much so, I wish I was 30 years younger. Um, but um, th th there's a lot more kind of turbulence and a lot more upheaval to come, I think, in the next few months and years. Oh, thanks, John. That's good. Um, what we do here, John, you know, we're fairly... Um, we're, we're, you know, we're not real, uh, uh, if we're fairly liberal about stuff, we, we, do, we put the hands up if necessary. If not, we don't it, either way. But Ro Roger's got his hand up. So um, go ahead, Roger. You've got a question. Trying, I'm, I'm trying to stay, stick with the protocol, Rich. Oh, that's okay. It's no problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, John. That was great. Um, I, I appreciate the, uh, um, the information. Um, last week, um, I think I, re I recall re reading an article about the, um, I mean, the inflation is everywhere. We're, we're experiencing it here in America, but um, if I, if my mind uh, re recollection is correct, that um, in Britain, it's the largest increase in, in inflation in, in four decades is what I think I read. I'm not right. sure if that's, that's correct or not, but, right, yeah. but they attributed it, um, a lot to the war uh, that y y your your inflation there is affected more by the war than it is here in the U.S. But also that the the previous prime minister, uh, the woman that just left trust, that she she did basically the same thing that Trump did by by giving a um, huge tra tax breaks to the to the most wealthiest uh, people in the in the in the country, and it um, it just didn't work. Um, we saw the same situ situation over here um, in America. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's um, what's not happening over here. I mean, we are having some 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 developments along the lines of people trying to organize and things like that. But what's not happening is because we don't have a labor party. We don't have a party of our own like you folks do. So um, it's it's um, I don't know if I'd. I think our pol our political uh, landscape over here is fairly volatile too. We're headed into the midterms um, uh, in a week. Uh, we're voting on midterms, and it uh, it could be um, depends on who you read and what you read. It could be a blood bloodbath for the Democrats as far as um, losing both the House and the Senate, or uh, or who knows uh, what, what's going to happen. But I mean, the right wing over here is is in my my opinion it seems like they're gaining they're gaining um influence and and uh uh becoming much more bold and um we have no um we don't have a voice in in labor there's no strong voice in labor calling uh calling for what needs to be done anyway i appreciate the uh the contribution there well i was going to say there is a strong voice in labor but it's coming out of the un unorganized. Like, this, <laughs> well, that, like there you go. There you go. <laughs> There's an, I mean, they can't shut this guy down, you know. And uh, 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 this is the guy that, who, who, who led the Amazon um, struggles. They're younger people. They're a bit streetwise. They're ve they're very different. And um, I mean, when you when you think about it, the organ the national body of the organized labor here, the AFL-CIO, the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations, they had their meeting in June and they wouldn't, they kept these guys out, the Starbucks yeah. organizers and the this, Amazon organizers out. I mean, it gives you uh, some this idea. This guy right Smalls, uh, Richard, has he got a, a national profile? Then? Oh, oh yeah, undoubtedly, yeah. No, he's and, and also he's got an. In, I, in what in what way? In, um, well, just firstly, he's all over the. He, he goes around those the Starbucks. He's on Twitter if you want to follow him. 
and I've sent him most of the stuff I put on the blog. He's never responded to me, but um, who has is Layla Dalton, the young woman at Starbucks. She's she's responded to me one time, but I follow both there. But no, Smalls is yeah, he's 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 definitely got a national profile because Amazon is so big. Yeah. They're so big and they lost a vote up in northern New York, up in Albany. Um, but, you know, I think I wrote a piece. I can't remember to put it on Facebook or a blog or whatever. I lose track sometimes. Uh, um, they voted down the union. But th what I think, and I think we probably agree with this, we got to realize that it's not being anti-union. If you're going to, every worker, like, like when they lost the one in Bessemer in Al Alabama, if you vote yes for a union, the boss is going to terrorize you. And if the, if you want them to vote yes, the unions have to show that they can bring some power to the table. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the issue. It's not that they're anti-union. They know what the uh, boss Amazon, is. Uh, Amazon depots are organizing here as well. There have been some strikes, some walkouts in some of the depots, and some of them have been successful in organizing. Yeah. Well, anybody else have a, some comment? Um, tomorrow, I know it's your first time, but don't feel, you know. Um, I can't find the, the little thingy that makes you hold up your hand. Well, you can put your hand up. Where Where is it at? Anybody but, can tell us she's on. A, that's OK. A, I'll just say it. The fellow Smalls was working at Amazon and they fired him. Yes. And he knew <laughs> that he wouldn't have been fired had they had a union in right. a union. And so what he did was he went around, like he said, everywhere he could to get members to join the union. And the Amazon people, you know how they describe a person, like his personality characteristics? They said that he, was, he wasn't very smart and he was from the lower end of uh, society. They kind of put the finger down on him. But he kept it up until he got a union. I don't know if he got reemployed or he just now has his job that he does. But he did that because of the way he was treated. He was fired there. Yeah, no, he, he's the president of that union, the American, the Amazon Labor Union, I think. I hope he has help. He probably does. But they gave yeah. everybody a raise at one of the Amazon's plants. They gave him a $2 raise to keep the union at bay. Yeah, they've we'll done see. that. They've raised they've raised wages at the uh -huh. cost of a cost of a billion dollars. Yeah. Because they don't want a union. Ah, Wendy's here. That yeah, Wendy's been here all the time. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Hi, um, Wendy. I knew. I've known Wendy a long time. She, she's 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 a scrapper too, uh, uh Tamora. <laughs> They're all scrappers in here. But um, Frank has just joined us from Detroit. He just come on. We would um, John Pickard here. Frank gave a. Oh, I'll take turn the recorder off now. Let me just turn this off. Um, for, uh, um, where am I at? Because I'm not great on this. Let's. Oh, stop recording. Okay.